Elgato is probably best known for their capture cards, offering options for pretty much any scenario including 1080p streaming, 4K capturing, and even recording your DSLR or mirrorless camera. Well now, nearly three years after the release of the HD60S Plus, we have a new capture card, the HD60X, and this retails for $189.99, so it makes it the exact same price as the HD60S Plus. This new capture card, the HD60X, is virtually the same in pretty much all ways as the HD60S Plus, but there are a few new features specifically designed for next-gen consoles and TVs, and we'll be taking a look at those features in this video. Hi, my name is Jack and welcome to Kit Guru. So the HD60X not only adds a few new features, but also has a completely new design. Elgato has dropped the rounded design from previous models and gone with what I consider to be a more functional design. The inputs and outputs aren't either side of the capture card anymore, instead they're at the back, which means that if this is on your desk, you can neatly tuck all the cables down the back of it unless your desk is flush with the wall. Like all the previous models, we have our HDMI in and out, and there's also the 3.5 mm TRS input at the front for audio capture, and this would probably have been better at the back though to make the HD60X look even tidier. Turning the HD60X over, there are two rubber strips that stop the device from moving about too much on your desk, and I really like this new design. It looks smart, and it's tiny at just 10 centimeters by 7 centimeters by 1.8 centimeters, and it weighs only 91 grams, which makes it ideal for streamers who are constantly on the move. There's also a nice Elgato logo debossed into the top, which is a nice touch, and with so many setups focused on aesthetics these days, it's clear the HD60X isn't going to be an eyesore. When you first get the Elgato HD60X, the box is pretty standard for Elgato products, all the info is on the back and inside you get the capture card, one HDMI 2 cable and one USB-C to A cable and there's no manual included, instead there's a prompt printed on the panel inside the box to download the software and manuals online. And the HD60X supports all major consoles with HDMI outputs. For my tests I used either my PlayStation 4 or my PC and I know that you don't really need a capture card for single PC setups but to test HDR, 1440p, 120fps and stuff like that I've used my PC. In terms of system requirements to actually use this you will need a Windows 10 64-bit PC or Mac OS 10.13 or later for either of those. Elgato recommends a 6th gen Intel i5 CPU or AMD Ryzen 7 processor or better with an Nvidia GeForce GTX 10 series GPU there's no note of AMD GPU support, but they should work. You also need at least 4GB RAM and a USB 3 port. The pass-through that you get from the HD60X is uncompressed 444 chroma sampling RGB. So what you see on your screen should look as if you weren't using an Elgato at all or any kind of device in between your console and your monitor. The HD60X also supports 4K 60 HDR pass-through, as well as 1440p 120fps HDR pass-through as well. To record footage, you can use Elgato's own 4K capture utility, or any other software like OBS or XSplit will work. If you record in 4K capture utility, you are limited to 4 to 0 recordings in terms of chroma subsampling, but if you use OBS, you can use 4 to 2 on certain resolutions and frame rates. To do this, once you open OBS, go to your video device settings and under video format select YUY2. Again, this is only available for certain resolutions and I could only seem to get it to work with 1080p. When it comes to 420 recordings, I find the colors to be good. I don't think it's something someone's really going to notice unless they're, you know, pixel peeping your stream, which is highly unlikely. Especially with compression on most platforms like YouTube and Twitch, I really don't think anybody is going to notice if you're recording 420 chroma subsampling footage. The HD60X lets you record in a number of different formats and resolutions which are virtually all the same as the HD60S Plus, but there are a few new features on this product. You can now record 4K30 SDR footage, but in order to actually record in 4K30, your computer needs to be set to 4K30, and I don't think there's gonna be anybody that's gonna to want to actually play in 4K30. I played Rainbow Six Siege for about a minute for this test, and it was basically unbearable at 30 FPS, but I'm not really sure how many people would actually want to watch 4K 30 FPS footage, and especially as most streamers are still using 1080p 60, I think that extra 30 FPS frame rate will be wanted on streaming platforms over the resolution, but that's just my opinion. You may want to use 4K 30 for anything else. You could also use 4K 30 for recording your camera, for example, although Elgato does have the cam link for that, which is a lot cheaper at £120, so I don't think you get the HD60X for that. And although the 4K 60 HDR pass-through is a great feature, if you actually want to record HDR, you're limited to 1080p 60. 
One great feature of the HD60X is that you can actually pass through 1440p at 120fps. So I have a 49 inch ultra wide and I had to use my monitor at 2560 by 1440p for my HD60X tests as this capture card doesn't officially support ultra wides and it definitely doesn't support pass through of ultra wide resolutions, at least in my tests. When gaming with a 1440p resolution at 120fps, 4K capture utility is able to record 1440p at 60fps at 100 megabits per second, which looks absolutely brilliant. And max bit rates all depend on your resolution and frame rate, and we'll get into that in a minute. For example, 1080p 60 maxes out at 60 megabits per second, 1080p 60 HDR maxes out at 45 megabits per second, 1440p 60 maxes out at 100 megabits per second, and 1440p 60 HDR maxes out at 75 megabits per second, and 4K 30 maxes out at 50 megabits per second, and so on. And you'll be able to see these max bit rates in 4K capture utility when you go through all the different resolutions. For all resolutions though, HDR capture has a lower bit rate than SDR. And if you want to record with higher bit rates, you can use programs like OBS, but to be honest, again, for most online streaming content, I think these bit rates are fine. I did try 1440p or 120fps HDR pass through, and that worked fine, no problems in terms of actually playing on my screen, but when it came to recordings, I was getting some major stuttering in Jedi Fallen Order. And as you can see from this footage, it is completely unusable. To fix this, I had to switch to 1440p 60fps in HDR mode, and then it worked fine when it came to recordings. Oddly though, when I played PUBG at 1440p, 120fps HDR, the recording actually wasn't too bad. There was a slight bit of stuttering, but overall, this is totally usable. If your pass through is 1440p, 120fps HDR, it will record 1080p, 60fps HDR, but this still looks great. So those results were kind of surprising to me that Jedi Fallen Order was so stuttery, but then PUBG was fine. And I'm assuming this is something to do more with my hardware than Elgato, or it might just be a combination of both, including the bandwidth. When I set my system to 1440p 120fps SDR mode, there was absolutely no issues whatsoever in Elgato's 4K capture utility. Again, my guess is that it's just super taxing on the system and doing 120fps and HDR at 1440p. The HD60X also supports HDR pass through, but SDR recordings. And this is great if you want to play in HDR, but don't want your recordings to be. This works perfectly with my PS4, so as you can see in 4K capture utility my game is HDR, but my capture is 1080p 60fps SDR. And this definitely doesn't look like a HDR recording if I put both up on the same screen so you can compare the two, so it's great to know that this works. And here's a list of all the supported resolutions and frame rates in terms of input and capture. Another new feature of the HD60X is VRR support. This is variable refresh rate, something that's only really being supported on newer TVs. This is great if you have a next gen console that supports it, and it's basically like G Sync or FreeSync that we have with monitors, but now it's being applied to TVs. So you're going to get cleaner recordings, less tearing, and this is great if you have those next gen consoles. From my tests, the HD60X has performed brilliantly in all of the situations. It hasn't gotten too hot either, which is good. I remember the older days of capture cards, you could basically fry an egg on them. And although the 4K60 Pro on paper sounds like a better capture card, having the VRR support in the HD60X is actually a really big benefit, especially for those next gen users. Before I conclude this video, let's take a look at the 4K capture utility that you can get from Elgato's website. So from the capture tab, you can see a nice large preview of your game. Here you can see Red Dead 2 from my PS4. The source is 1080p 60 HDR, and you can check this by looking over here at the top right. Now once you hit record, you'll also see your capture resolution, and next to that you have the remaining space on the hard drive you've chosen to save the files. And at the bottom left, you have the file name and info. Click the eye icon to change these details. In the middle is the record button, then on the bottom right you have the screenshot button, the mic mute button, and when you unmute this you can see your audio levels, and then finally the game audio levels and the mute button for that as well. Going up to the top left you can switch to the library tab, and I really like how this is set up so you can easily find your recordings using tags and other data. Next we'll take a look at the settings, so over on the top right click the little cog and the settings window pops up. From the first tab we have our general settings, and you can enable stream link here. This lets you view the same feed in OBS and 4K capture, so you can record or stream from two different programs at the same time. Without this you'd just have a black screen in OBS if you had the preview in 4K capture utility. You do need to download an OBS plugin though for this to work. Next you have your software update options. Now from the device tab, you can switch capture devices, check your video input, audio inputs, HDMI color range, and adjust input EDID modes and EDID internals. I just left these as default. 
Using the picture tab, you can tweak brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue. Although again, I'd probably just leave these as default and not mess with them. Then we have our recording options. So our library location, and this is where your files are saved to. You have your screenshot location, video encoder settings, and I'm using my GPU, but you can use software encoding if you want. Then you have the checkbox for HDR recording. Uncheck this to play in HDR, but record in SDR. Next, you have frame rate options. And as I said earlier, you can go through these and each of the settings will have slightly different max bit rates that you can adjust. Finally, you have the option to reduce preview frame rates during recordings. This is useful if your system struggles and then an option to enable flashback recording. This records footage in the background so you can save clips even if you weren't recording manually, but I prefer to keep this off to save storage space. Finally, for the settings, you have the mic options and here you can select your default audio input and this actually caused some issues for me. By default, this is set to the Elgato for some reason, and this caused some weird duplicated audio in my recordings that sounded really awful. You get this weird sort of echoing sound, and here's an example. You can also choose to mono downmix the audio as well as adjust gain, view input levels and monitor the audio as well. It's a shame that the 4K capture utility doesn't have any kind of streaming options because I think most people would find that really beneficial, especially if you're a newcomer to streaming. But then when OBS is free and there's so many great features on that software, I think it's probably just a good idea to learn that instead. So what do I think of the HD60X? Well, I think if you have the HD60S Plus or the 4K60 Pro, then I don't think it's worth upgrading to this. Is it even an upgrade? I don't know. But this does have the VRR support, which is beneficial. It's only really you that's gonna know if this is needed. But again, if you've not had it all this time and it's not really caused any problems, then I can't see the reason to get the HD60X. But if you're someone that doesn't have a capture card at all and you're looking to get into streaming and capturing footage, then I think the HD60X is a really good option. And although some may say that the 420 chroma subsampling isn't really enough and that the colors don't look too good, I think for most online streaming and you know content, no one's gonna notice. If you're looking to stream and record gameplay, I think the HD60X is gonna give you some great results. And from my tests, my footage looks great and the software gave me plenty of options to customize how I record. That brings me to the end of my review of the HD60X. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. It really helps out the Kit Guru channel. If you want to see more from us, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon as well, and you'll be notified when we are Upload another video. If you want to pick up some cool merch like the t-shirt I've been wearing in this video, the links are in the description. And you can also support us on Patreon to unlock exclusive content. That's it from me. My name's Jack. You've been watching Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next one.